Okay, so welcome all to uh, my introduction to social network analysis with Perl. My name is Darko Obradovic from Kaiserslautern, pretty close to Frankfurt. Um, in the last years, I've been researching at a research institute and applying lots of social network analysis to different problems. And so by the time I started to uh, bring some of this code I used and created to CPAN, and today I just want to introduce you what the module is, when you could use it, what the benefits are, and uh, what applications or what uh, problems can be solved with it. So in general, social network analysis includes social networks, uh, which in the official definition is not Facebook directly, but this is a social networking service. So a social network basically is any um, Construct of human beings and their relations. Could, these relations could be anything like know each other, collaborates, talks with each other. It's pretty open in the um, design of your network. And we are now interested in to analysis of such networks. So the typical applications um, is to deal with uh, traditionally with uh, people and their relations, but by the time, of course, in recent years with the growing internet and so on, um, these algorithms and methods were also brought to the web graph because it's also heavily interlinked. And um, you can also apply this to um, documents in general which are interlinked with each other. Um, there is wide usage in biological networks with protein interaction and so on, which also form very large complex networks. And um, a little bit more special application is so-called two-mode networks where you have different things related with each other. Users and products they are interested in or movies they have been renting on an online website. And this is also a very prominent use case this day, um, despite something a little bit more special than a general network. So the background of this is uh, that network analysis is um, a very active research discipline in science, which has its foundations in graph theory, which uh, most people should know from basic math studies. But uh, it has a very different focus. Um, I will explain this a little bit later. Um, there exist lots and lots of uh, books and research papers on this topic with, I think, each year around 3,000, 4,000 publications in the wider area. Um, also, many mathematicians, physicists uh, have become very active here, and it's kind of difficult to keep track of all this. And uh, in the same run, of course, there are so many ideas, concepts, and methods to analyze networks that you have to be uh, really picky to find something that is suitable to your problem. So in general, the very typical goals are to um, identify some uh, special user in the network, which is either very prominent or very central, which has good connections or many connections or is on important paths or whatever. There are many criteria you can analyze for. Another typical task is to um, find groups of related or heavily related nodes in the network um, which form groups on their own, which have relations with other groups. Um, then there is also, especially in recommender systems, you try also to predict uh, links which might be established in the future based on the current network, for example, when recommending uh, new contacts in your social networking service. Um, this is also very common. And uh, on a more abstract level, usually the idea is to understand such a complex network structure. So if it's like 20 nodes uh, connected with each other, you can still have an understanding by looking at it. But as soon as we have uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, connections among thousands of nodes, um, you definitely need some algorithmic approach to it. And visualization is then also a rather challenging task, uh, but there are also a lot of solutions, but this is not a um, topic of today's talk. So when you have some form of network you are interested to look into, um, there exist tools, there are quite good tools also, where you have uh, the usual uh, GUI, and you can start entering nodes, watch it, and uh, calculate some metrics, see a table with all the nodes and the metrics, which works really fine uh, as long as it's uh, a relatively small network. 
On the other side of the scale, you have, um, for example, what Google does. They have a search engine with an index of, I don't know how, bil how many billion uh, websites which are interlinked with each other. And that's a completely different approach where they have uh, very special databases, graph databases. Um, just a few uh, to mention are Big Data, Node um, Neo4j, which offer very special support here on a persistent level um, with uh, special um, query languages and so on. And then there is something in between for programming languages where you have the simple package to um, establish such a data structure, analyze it, program algorithms, and so on, which is uh, the focus of today. So in Perl, there already exists on CPAN um, the graph module, which is uh, quite nice, I think, because um, it offers you all the basic things about graph theory you are looking for. But then again, uh, graph theory is not uh, what social network analysis uh, really does because it's not about transposing matrices and uh, having some eigenvalues and so on. Um, it's more focusing on large networks and where graph PM comes uh, relatively fast to its limits. There exists also Boost Graph, which is an interface to a C++ library, which is uh, intended to be very, very fast, uh, as long as you can compile it. I couldn't, um, but probably just as a setting of a Linux machine. The problem uh, with that is that you have to use the algorithms which are in Boost and uh, nothing else, which is definitely not uh, what I wanted. So it depends on the algorithms which are there and what you want to do and how to get your data in. So my uh, goal was then to create a very sophisticated, quite simple, but still efficient uh, framework to do all that. So um, it still creates its whole structures in memory, which just means it's not for big data, um, but for middle-sized data. I will give you some dimensions later. Um, it, it is very flexible with the plug algorithms you can program for it and just plug in. And um, yeah, I also tried to uh, put some state-of-the-art algorithms for common problems in there, but um, at the moment this is just uh, containing what I used to need. So if something else arises, maybe drop me a mail or use the plugin system uh, if you're interested. You can just experiment a little bit. And all this is very nicely uh, programmable from within Perl. So uh, keeping it simple, there's just uh, base classes for network, node, and edge, which can be um, used in their very native way. And um, then there exists uh, in the namespace um, an area for filters, which means you can read and write certain file formats into your data structure and out. Um, a selection of algorithms uh, to use for calculations on the network and also some uh, generator space for random networks, which is something a little bit more special. So a really simple synopsis just means uh, you create your network, you can load something into it with uh, quite verbose uh, methods and then uh, iterate on nodes, edges, attributes, and so on. So here we just uh, load something, calculate the page rank values for each node and print them out, which might be a very long list, of course, for large networks. Uh, every of these base uh, classes is extendable, so whatever you put in your uh, lib in the plugin namespace of these structures and all the methods that the plugin exports will get imported by the classes and are then available uh, through the normal objects you create. And uh, now showing some examples of uh, things I did with this. So one of my main tasks was analyzing uh, blocks on the internet, how they are connected with each other, what they are um, doing, who's important, who is not, who forms communities about which topics, and so on. And so these are just some representative data of the collection I have. So we typically have uh, here a couple of 100,000 um, objects, which is either nodes or edges. Um, and for a normal machine, this also scales to a few millions of objects. Um, of course, with a larger machine, you can extend it a little bit. But as soon as we are talking about uh, hundreds of millions of objects, you 
pretty much want to switch over to some graph database instead um, because also persistency will become a problem with loading and uh, saving. So on these data sets, um, I will just present two typical uh, things you, uh, a researcher might be interested in or an analyst for a business scenario. Um, before that, um, I will use some abstraction because of uh, so many uh, objects. So let's just assume we have a small graph on um, the top here. So if you think in terms of groups of, in this graph, you can just uh, merge them to three groups. And then the typical adjacency matrix from a graph theory, which is on the bottom left, um, can also be um, divided into sectors of these groups as soon as you have rearranged them according to the group so that all group members are next to each other in the adjacency matrix. And at that point, um, you will have the number of edges inside such a group, which then, if you yeah, look a little bit uh, more abstract from the top at such a matrix, which will give you fields of dark or light color depending of how many edges of the potential edges do really exist. And so in this example, you can see pretty well that inside the groups, um, we have pretty dark color, which means they are interconnected quite well. And between the groups, um, it's more light gray or completely white between A and uh, C, for example. And so um, I will just use um, this more abstract uh, visualization for the examples. So one of the very uh, common things you want to have in a network is community identification. So that means to find the groups which um, are tightly working together or know each other quite well and separate them from each other. And for imagining, um, for example, all Perl users that are running around at conferences, you would probably expect something like uh, finding in the large network, which is relatively sparsely connected, to find um, some cohesive groups um, at the bottom. You would probably find a group of German Perl users which meet at German Perl workshops. And in there, you would also find uh, members of specific cities. And of course, inside the uh, complete um, European User base, we would also expect to find uh, for larger Perlmongers group also clusters or communities. And there is one uh, really nice algorithm that uh, was published four years ago, uh, which was quite revolutionary. Um, I will not go too much into the details, but usually um, identifying communities in a network is an NP hard problem, which means for uh, computer science that um, on anything larger, you simply cannot apply it. And there has been a pretty long race for good approaches, heuristic algorithms in the last uh, one or two decades. And as I said, finally, uh, there was one algorithm that was quite, had quite impressive uh, results, both in quality of the communities identified and especially in uh, runtime efficiency. So this is a comparison to other top algorithms where you see that it's uh, at least an order of magnitude better. And this is um, also what I implemented for the package. And here's an example of the Portuguese block space, which was um, separated relatively quickly in quite good communities, some larger, some smaller. And if you look into the blocks, you will find um, the different uh, reasons for being a community, which is either uh, blocks that deal with internet and uh, social media and mobile scenario. On the other hand, blocks that write about politics, the economic situation and state of society. Smaller groups which deal with recipes and cooking and so on. So uh, it was very amazing uh, to have such good results in very fast time. Then another typical problem is uh, what I mentioned initially is finding important nodes, authoritative nodes, central nodes, which uh, means that uh, you are looking for a structure in your network which is uh, like centralized. You have a core group of uh, important people and a wider periphery of uh, less important people. So in our example of uh, the Perl users, we would probably expect to have very well connected people like Larry Damien and so on in the center, in the core, and other people 
like uh, me or others in the, more in the periphery. So identifying this um, is also NP-hard because there are so many different uh, possible um, sortings for the adjacency matrix which you all would have to check for an optimal result. Again, it's about uh, um, approximations, heuristics and so on. And there also exist quite fast algorithms doing something like this which ends up for the very same network with a different grouping um, in a view like this where you have at the top left um, the nodes which are very central in the core and many, many nodes which are more peripheral because they don't have so many connections uh, to important nodes in this network. Okay, so um, still have enough time. Some demo and comparison, so um, using this detection of core and periphery in a network. Um, I've used the English blocks for an example, which means we have uh, roughly 500k objects in there. And uh, so loading the structure into memory and building it took uh, like 17 seconds and then performing the analysis of uh, core nodes and peripheral nodes was a matter of just three seconds once it's there. Um, I implemented the very same algorithm with a standard graph uh, PM interface, which of course also took only 17 seconds to load, but it already took uh, nearly two minutes to execute, simply because it's not really designed for traver traversal algorithms. So concerning memory usage, um, my package is also like uh, needing 33% uh, memory less, so it can fit a little bit uh, larger networks into memory to analyze them. Um, there is the possibility to use uh, reference nodes in GraphPM, um, which speeds up the whole thing a lot, if you see. Um, it also reaches uh, less than five seconds execution time for the algorithm. Um, it's a little bit more costly to build the structure and um, the bad thing is that you don't really have a node class in GraphPM which uh, means you always have to use the graph object and all the algorithms which are there uh, will not give you reference uh, ref vertex nodes in GraphPM's um, wording and all the filters which load you different files also won't create such a network. So in the basic scenario, you're all, always stuck with the slow version, which was my reason uh, to write something new. Okay, so this is also then, with the ref, ref vertex nodes, it's also quite okay, um, I would say. Just minimally slower, but uh, simply not so usable, in my opinion. Okay, depending on time, it's now almost 20 minutes. Um, could maybe just quickly show um, using all that from a shell. You can also uh, experiment with things. So for example, loading the Portuguese data set, which was like uh, the 17 second. No, no, it's, it was the English uh, one with the 17 seconds. This is a little bit faster. and running the identity fine community algorithm which doesn't work right now. Uh, okay, so maybe first of all, we'll see if there are some questions. And then um, if you want to see something else later, we could probably talk in person during coffee break or tomorrow. So thank you very much for the attention and so if you have questions please ask.